I just want to say thank you so much for having me here. It's a really big honor to be able to speak to you guys today. Just about my experience I had in uh, Hong Kong or in my wall on my DTS. And um, <clears throat> sorry. I just want to say thank you as well for um, all the prayers as well. Um, being overseas and all that, it was really, um, it just was really impactful for me to know that back home, the church was supporting me um, with prayers and with friends as well, just praying, praying for me. And so I just want to say thank you so much for that. But uh, yes, so for me, for the last five months, I have been in doing my DTS uh, YWAM in Hong Kong. So that's across the ocean. Um, it's really beautiful, probably the most beautiful city I've ever seen so far. Um, the food's really great, really delicious. Um, and so, yeah, so I did, it was five months. Um, so the first three months were in Hong Kong. It's called the lecture phase. So there, a lot of the stuff that we did was a lot of guest speakers would come in and um, they would speak, and, or, and then um, as well as uh, we would have this, every weekend, we would do this thing which is called Not Ignored. So every Friday afternoon, we would go and we would, um, we would get rice and we would fill up um, plastic bags, roughly this big, roughly. And then so we'd r fill roughly around 300-ish, give or take, of rice. And then on Saturday morning, we'd go and we'd distribute the rice with water and um, with water and buns and rice. And so the group that we'd um, give that to would be a lot of street workers, the elderly, uh, um, construction workers, and cardboard collectors, and just people on the streets. Um, it was really cool being able to just um, see that side of the city as well, not just the, the rich and the, the tall side of it, but also the salt smaller and uh, just the more needy side as well. Um, with the whole language barrier, a lot of it, I, I got to hear some stories, but not as many stories as I could have, but um, it was really cool as well just being able to pray for them and just um, hear a bit of the stories and how, um, yeah, just in their life, and just being able to hand out um, rice to them and just seeing the smiles on their faces as we do that, which was really cool. And so we would do that every weekend, would be, which is called Not Ignored. And then, um, so that was the, uh, mostly the big part of the lecture phase was just a lot of lectures. And then for the outreach was, I did two weeks, no, sorry, I did two weeks in Hong Kong for my, for my outreach, and then five weeks in Thailand. So Thailand is, it's Asia as well. Um, and so I was there in uh, Phuket and Chiang Mai. So that would be the, t Phuket would be in the bottom of Thailand and Chiang Mai would be in the top. And so we were there for five weeks. We, did, we partnered with a lot of churches um, we did a lot of street ministry. Um, we did a lot of um, busking, so playing music on the streets and then doing a lot of dramas as well. Um, it was really cool doing that, and we got to partner with churches um, to, well, with doing that, and we did a lot of, um, we did a lot of, um, what's the word? Uh, we did a lot of care groups. There we go. We did a lot of care groups with the people. So we did a lot of care groups with the churches and a lot of um, Bible studies. It was really cool seeing just that side of Hong, um, Thailand. It's such a different, um, it was a very different experience than I was expecting from Hong Kong to Thailand. It's a lot more open and um, the, they only get, the, aller, the annual salary that they get in a year is around 2,000 Canadians. So that's what they get roughly in a year. So it's a very needy country. But just seeing the hearts that they have, they have probably, like, I, they're so generous. They are so kind. They give so much of their time to us. They give, like, it's just so humbling experience just going to houses where they have barely a roof over their head, and yet they come, and they serve us, like, a ginormic meal, a big barbecue, and it's just so humbling. And it just really makes me feel like there's something that, there's something here that I feel like we are missing in a way that they have, because they have so little, but yet they're so happy, and they just, and they're just, and they love so much. And so that's something that really impact, impacted me a lot, was just seeing their generosity, seeing their humbleness, and just seeing how much they just pour into the people and pour into us. I felt like going to Thailand was, we, it was our job to go and pour into the people there, but I felt like a lot of it was all, as well as we were getting poured into as well, which was a really great experience. But um, today, one thing that I would like to share with you guys an experience or something that I felt like I grew in on my time on my outreach or my DTS was, um, so first I'll give you a bit of a context. 
So going to DTS, doing my DTS was something that I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Um, and going into it, I really wanted to have a life-changing experience. I really wanted to go in there, have a 360 change, uh, 180 or whatever it is, and then and just I'll just be filled with the Holy Spirit. I just want to have like this fire inside of me. I want to come back and change man, a fully new person in a way. Um, and then as I got there, um, I was doing all my studies. I was listening to the lectures. I was journaling, which is something I've never done before. And if I can journal, all you guys can journal as well. <laughs> but um, it's, it's really messy. But if you can read your own handwriting, then I guess it's worth it. But yeah, so I did a lot of journaling, a lot of just like paying attention. And I felt, and I was just like, I would write down what I was learning. I would take in what I was learning. And I would talk to my mentors, talk to the people I was speaking to. And I, because I wanted to get this, I wanted to get this, I wanted to get all that I could from this um, experience that I had. I wanted to get all that I could. And I felt like as I was doing that, as I was putting all my, all the stuff in, I was, yes, I was like, yeah, paying attention to lectures. I was talking to people. I was trying to um, live, I was trying to, um, the stuff that I was taught, I was trying to live what I was being taught. But I felt like as I was doing that, I felt like I wasn't getting this change, this um, thing that I was looking for. I felt like I wasn't getting this life 360 change. And I just felt like week after week, I'd be, uh, just a lot of things would be coming in. I'd be learning a lot. But I felt like, where's this, where's this change that I'm looking for? Where's this like big bang change that I'm looking for? And um, which was really tough sometimes. So I felt like I would come into a week. And I would, um, I would go, I would learn a lot, I would take a lot in, but I was like, where's this, where's this really big change I was looking for? And um, then on the seventh week, I believe, yes, on the seventh week we were talking, it was the week on Father, Har no, uh, Holy Spirit. And the last day we had a guest speaker come and to talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and at the end of the class, she uh, asked everyone if they wanted to go stand up and walk, the, walk to the end of the room, and then she would come and pray for us, and we'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so I, I, we went up, all the students, the six of us, went up to uh, the back to uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, as, we're, as she's praying over us, as we're doing that, I'm closing my eyes, have my hands open, and I can just hear everyone around me, that I can just really feel and hear that they're being touched. I can hear them crying. I can just really feel that God's in them, and, they're, um, and just like really touching them. And I'm just there, and I have my eyes closed, and I have my hands open, and I'm feeling nothing. I'm just standing there, and I'm feeling there's nothing there that I'm feeling. I'm, all these other people, they're, I could feel them just like they're weeping. They're on the ground. They're, they're, feeling, they're feeling this touch of the Holy Spirit, and I'm there just standing there. And I felt like this is something I wanted more than every, everyone else there. I felt like I wanted to be touched by the Holy Spirit so much more than everyone else. I wanted that. I wanted this so badly. This changed my life. I wanted God to, I wanted to feel God. And then at the end of the, uh, I'll take, I'll take a slow at the end of uh, the, uh, the time of receiving the Holy Spirit, or um, uh, I just real happy, we were weeping, or there's a lot of joy hugging each other. But uh, at the end of it, I went to talk to the, the, uh, the teacher that was speaking to us about the Holy Spirit. And um, I just really laid my stuff on her, and I was like, this is what I was feeling, and just how I felt like I was trying to give so much, and I felt like I wasn't getting what I was expecting I wasn't getting this change that I was really hoping for. Um, and I felt like she really said something to me that really opened my eyes. It was that I felt, she, she told me that it feels like that I feel like that God doesn't see me or hear me. But really, it might be that God feels like he doesn't see you. But he does, that God feels like I don't see him or hear him. And that's something that really spoke out to me. I was like, wait, that God feels like I might not, that I don't see him. Or hear him, and that really got me thinking. Because then, looking back, I feel like a lot of times in my life, I would go and I would speak, or I would, sorry, I wouldn't speak. Um, I would go and we'd have worship, or I would be, or we'd be being filled with the Holy Spirit, or just go out with my quiet time with the Lord. And I felt like I would go there and I'd try to go there with an aspect of. Um, I need to feel something to know that God is with me. I need to have this feeling that God is with me. If I'm worshiping, I'm praising the Lord. And that if I feel God, if I feel his presence, then yes, he was with me. And that um, if I go into my quiet time, I feel, man, that's something really revealed to me during that time, then God was there. And that, but I had a feeling that if he wasn't there, if I didn't have, if I was worshiping the Lord during worship, and I didn't feel this 
I didn't feel his presence come on to me that I was, oh, I must have not been doing it right, or I feel like I must have, um, I just didn't have the right heart, or I guess see, it was in my, it was my time, I guess, to be filled with the Holy Spirit at that time. And I feel like God really spoke to me is that he is with us every single minute, and that when he asks us, when, he, when we ask for him to come to us, and we close, and we just give, we give him our lives, and we just, and we, what's the word again? Sorry. Surrender, that is well, that is close as well. <laughs> uh, we, we just, um, we come, to the, we, we come to him with a pure heart. We confess our sins. We come to him as a pure heart. He will come, and he will um, come into us. And it's so cool as well that in worship, it's such a big encouragement, is that worship is so much about him, not about us, and how we can have the heart where as we worship, it's not a heart of that I need to receive something to know that if I'm worshiping, to know that he's here with me, that I can just, well, that I can just worship the Lord, and I can know that he is with me, that I don't need to have this feeling of him coming and touching me to know that he's here with me, but I can also have the feeling that, he is that he is uh that he is with me no matter what and that as i'm going my as i and if i ask to be filled with the holy spirit that he will come and that it doesn't have to be a feeling that he is there and that's i feel like it's so much like how much god really loves us like he it's not just feelings he's like so personal in that way like we don't need a it's not just feelings and i feel like that's something that we need to learn more is that he comes to us not when it's just not just when it feels right but it's every single moment. And next, and I just really feel like with like worship, that would really hit me, um, is that when we're worshiping the Lord, that not to have a heart that um, I need to come into this and I need to feel the Holy Spirit and then, then there'll be a good worship. Then I know that God was moving in my life or moving other people's lives. But to have a heart that I know that God's with me no matter if I feel him or not, that I know he's touching me, that I know he's making change, that I know that, that I'm worshiping the Lord, I'm worshiping God, to have that kind of mindset, not to have a mindset that I need to get something out of it, but to have a mindset of giving it back to God. And I feel like that's so powerful to have that kind of mindset, to know that it just always should point right back to God um, in that, and with quiet time as well, when we're just going and doing our time and wanting to get close to the Lord, to not have a mindset of, I need to get something out of this, but as well just having the mindset that I'm just going to go and I'm going to spend time with my dad. And it's just so powerful to have that kind of mindset that it's just to have a personal relationship with him. And it's not a, I give, you take, or he takes, I give. Um, and then as well, with just being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's just when we go and we just want to be filled with like, someone comes and he asks, all right, if he wants to stand up and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we just go and we open our, we close our eyes. And to also have a heart there as with worship, that he will come and he will fill us up. It doesn't have to be a feeling. And sometimes we do get that feeling, and it's amazing. But to also have that feeling that it isn't just a um, feeling, but he's, he comes and he is cha make change. When he comes in, he does make change. He, he's so powerful in that way that any, everything he touches changes. He has that power. He has the power to, he has the key to every single person's heart. It's so powerful how, it's just crazy what he can all do to just realize that. Um, and that's one thing that really spoke to me um, in my time of DTS. And I just really want to encourage you guys as well that um, in your lives, next time you're worshiping or next time you're going to um, just speak with the Lord or have a time with him or um, there's, you just, uh, there's an opportunity to be filled with the Holy Spirit to have the... Um, to have the mindset, to have the heart set of not trying to get something in return, not trying to get something that I need God to come in, but to also have the um, feeling that he's going to come in, and I know that he's going to fill me, and I know that I'm just here to worship the Lord. I don't need to get anything out of it. I just need to praise the Lord that, that made me, that made me who I am. And I feel that's so powerful. And so I just want to leave you with that, that uh, God is so powerful, and that he is so personal, and that he touches us at the right moment, and that he comes when we want him to come. And if we come with a pure heart, he can do, he can do so many things. And so just have that heart of surrender as well. And so I just want to say thank you so much for uh, listening. And uh, I'd like to call Lene Weeb up. Good morning, guys. OK, this is scary. Um, I am going to start by showing some pictures, actually. Um, I went to New Zealand, like Eldon said, for my DTS, which was, like, so cool. Um, if you want to put the first picture up. This was my view out of my room window. Um, so that roof that you see, the black roof, 
is like the main building face. Um, yeah, as you can tell, it is super green there. It is super hilly. I could not handle that. That took a while to get used to that. Walking up and down and like panting like, <sighs> oh, it was brutal, but it was so good. Um, we had like to the right of the picture, I guess, we had a pasture of cows that I spent a lot of time with. <laughs> they were my best friends. <laughs> they tried to attack me as well, but that's okay. I forgave them. And then to the left of the picture, if we went down, it was like a, whoa, a 10 minute walk down to the valley, we called it, which was this beautiful waterfall, which I don't have a picture of actually to show you, but spent many, amount, um, many minutes swimming there. Super cool. If you wanna go to the next picture. You can't even tell as much, like on my phone, the picture is so much brighter. But if you see that second rainbow there, I don't think I've ever seen a rainbow so bright in my whole life. And um, I remember when I took this picture and when it was just like raining so much, I felt like in my life as well, there was a bit of like a, what's happening, God? I don't, like, uh, I'm scared. And all these things were happening. And it was just like such a good reminder of like God's promise and that he's still moving and that he's still there. And that was just like a huge encouragement to see like a double rainbow and like a rainbow that bright. I was just like, bro, what? So good. That's also our chapel that I got to spend a lot of time in praying. And um, yeah, I don't know. It was just like so cool to just be in there. And it's just like, has this like smell and you're just like whoa okay and like there's like communion like things I don't know it was just like so cool I loved it um but I'm just gonna hop right into outreach because that's a wild time um so I went to Vanuatu which I think is the next picture because nobody knows where that is and neither did I until Ashley Cornelson went and I looked it up so there it is um it's a series of 83 islands I believe and it's so small. If you look at Australia over there, and then Vanuatu, um, yeah. So I did not go to all 83 islands. I spent time on four of them. Um, but Port Vila, the one like where the star is, was where I spent like about half my time. Um, and then there was another island called we just call it Santo, but it's Spanish. The, the whole name I'm gonna butcher this, but like Espirito Santos, I think. I don't know. It's Spanish for Holy Spirit. I don't know. I thought that was so cool. Um, but yeah, so that is where I spent so much time um, for like context, like, not context, I don't know words, but um, it is like so tropical there. I was like 36 degrees Celsius with like 99% humidity. So you're just dripping sweat all the time. I put sunscreen on like 55 times a day and still got brutally sunburned. I was the only one on my team, so I don't know how that happened, but yeah, it was, it was so good, so beautiful. Um, the next picture is my outreach team. So I spent a lot of time with these people. They are like a second family. The whole school was, but these ones in specific. Um, so that interesting dress I'm wearing is called a mama's dress. Um, it has puffy sleeves and you can't see them, but they have like flappy things on the hips, which I don't know what they're for, honestly, but they're really cool and <laughs> very flowy and airy and yeah. The mamas would all wear them, and that was just like so cool. Um, you can go to the next picture as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna start going into a little bit of things we did during my outreach. So here, I'm doing wound care. Um, yeah, this kid doesn't have quite as many wounds as a lot of them did, but a lot of them have some pretty intense open wounds. Um, a lot of it's like bacterial stuff, and um, I was able to help them by cleaning them and like disinfecting and showing them how to wrap them and giving them the stuff to like take care of it themselves. And yeah, these wounds are like so painful. Like you can see them just like squirming, but in their culture, you're not allowed to make noise when you're in pain. And so they would just be there like, and, you're, and then like their parents would be like, Shh, you have to be quiet, like you can't talk. And I was just like, oh no, like this is so painful for them. Um, yeah, so I did lots of that. I also did a bunch of like hospital ministry where we went to the hospitals and like prayed for the patients there. I got to go into the maternity ward and spend time with the moms and their little babies or in labor. And that was like such a special time. Um, I think the next picture is food. Who doesn't love food? This is called Nalog. I couldn't tell you what's in it. Um, it's not my favorite, I will not lie, but 
that's just because it's new. If I had it every day, I'm sure I would love it eventually. But um, yeah, the flavor of it's not bad. There's not a lot to taste, but the texture is just interesting. I'm pretty sure this is like breadfruit, like crushed and shredded and I don't know. Yeah, so I got to try a lot of really cool things and it was just like so cool. And then the next picture is where I stayed in this cool little uh, half building hut thing. Um, covered in termites and mosquitoes and flies and centipedes. And this is not me trying to like complain, just to show you like what it was, because it was such a different experience and so different than how we live here. And I think that for me, it helped me to just like be so much more present in where I was. I think if I was like living like in this type of country, if I was living in like a super nice house, I don't think I would be able to relate and to like understand where people are coming from in the same way. And so just to like live so similarly to how they lived was just like such a cool experience for me. Um, and then I think I have one last picture. Kids ministry, that was like 90% of what we did is just putting kids programs on and playing with them and doing dances and jumping around in the blazing heat and like Oh, I have never sweat so much in my life, but it was so fun. And just like, yeah, they are a very shy group of people. And so it takes a bit to like break them in or get used to them or them get used to you. And so we would do some funky dances about like making this banana shake. And then at the end, we like poop the banana out. And that was just the funniest thing for all of us. And that got the kids. They're like, oh yeah, we're good. Like they laughed so hard as did we. And it was just, yeah, it was just so, so good. Um, but yeah, um, so that helps you see a little bit of where I was and what I was up to and how things went for me. Um, but I just want to share a testimony that happened, um, in New Zealand real quick. So we had, um, like outreach in New Zealand before we went to Vanuatu and, um, while I was there, we went to an old folks home and, oh, that was so much fun. We like did a dance for them. Some of them tried to dance with us, and it was just like so precious. But um, one of the girls on my team prayed for this one lady and felt the impression to wash her feet. And so we were washing, or she was washing her feet. And during that time, just like this lady, I don't remember her name actually, but she was just like, Whoa, I just feel the Holy Spirit like so strongly. Like, what this is so cool. And then, like, we moved on and we left. And then I think it was like a week later, my leader got a call from that lady and was like, she was just saying how um, that day her kids had come to pick her up and she had just realized that she forgot her pain meds. So she had gone into a car accident when she was 20 years old and has been on like intense pain meds ever since. And she's, I don't know, like 80 something now probably, 70, I don't know, but had forgotten to take her pain meds and just like had no pain in her back. And she was like, cool, I'm just gonna decide to like not take my pain meds until I need to. And I don't know how long it had been at the point when she called, but she had not taken pain meds since that. And it was just like, whoa, like, like God just healed her back. And that was so cool to witness. I had never seen or witnessed that before. And just for like this older lady to be like, I have no pain in my back and I've been having pain since I was 20. It's like, what is that? Like 60 years if she's 80 years old. Like that's just like so cool. Like how cool and awesome of a God do we have that he like cares? Like so cool, so cool. Um, yeah. I also have a testimony that will lead into a bit more um, stuff yet, but this is a personal one. Um, so during my time in Vanuatu, I experienced a lot of things, super cool stuff, super scary things as well. Um, but there was a time when we had gone to the second island I was staying in, Santo, and um, yeah, I had just been overcome with so much fear in like a way that's not normal to me. I was scared of the potential of earthquakes because I had experienced a pretty big earthquake um, prior to that, like a 6.5 out of like the biggest is eight. So it was like decently big for a first time experiencing an earthquake. That was like scary. Um, and I was like so scared of that happening again. I was so scared of the thought of like a tsunami. I was scared of thunder, which I love thunderstorms like terrified, I was scared of rain, I was scared of lightning, the bugs scared me, the dark scared me, everything was so scary to me. And it had gone on for a few days, I had like texted my parents, I was like, I don't know what's happening, please pray for me, this is like, oh, I just wanna leave, and like, I don't know, it was just like so out of the blue for me. I had texted some of my friends and been like, yeah, if you guys wanna pray that this fear would go away, like I don't really know what's happening. Um, and I was trying to like figure it out on my own, I was trying to like, 
yeah, try not to not bring it to my team, which is not what I should have done. But like, I was just like, I'll just pray it away and like, whatever, which that's a good thing to do is to pray. But eventually I talked with one of my leaders and I was like, I don't know what's happening. I'm just like overcome with fear. I'm scared of the dark. Like as soon as the sun goes down at 6.30, I'm just like paralyzed by fear almost. And like, this is not like me. I don't know what's happening. And she's like, I think you need to tell the team. And so I had told the team that day during debrief and I was just like, um, so I'm really scared of everything. And uh, yep. And I told them in more detail than that. But basically we just went into this mode of like, like spiritual warfare, you could say, of just like praying against the enemy because Vanuatu also has a stronghold of fear and they have lots of witchcraft that happens and goes on. And so oftentimes when you go to an outreach location, um, I don't know, the enemy likes to just use that to like use your vulnerability and your willingness to share to just like attack you as well. And so um, we just knew that this was not normal. This was not for me and this was not me. And we just prayed against like all fear and everything and we like prayed over each room of the house that we were staying in and that night like all fear was gone and I was just like whoa this is so cool I had some like really epic dreams and then like the next morning I was like what a life like what and I like I was like okay cool like let's see if this is real like whatever and then the next day I was like the sun had been gone for a few hours and I like just didn't even notice and I was like there's no more fear like what? And I think I had even like stormed that night and I was like, oh my gosh, guys, like, oh, the Lord's like so good. I was like, just so like, I don't know, that fear was like a real hindrance. And like after that, there was like nothing. Like I did experience a few more earthquakes after that, quite a few actually, but there was just like, well, there the earth shakes again, I guess. Like I'm just going to keep going. And yeah, it was just like so cool to see how the Lord worked during that. Um, but yeah, just during my whole DTS, like spiritual authority is something that's been like highlighted to me so much and how we often are so complacent with just like listening to whatever voices we're hearing, whether that's the Holy Spirit or whether that's the enemy's voice. And um, I don't know, there was just like an awakening of like, I don't want to listen to the enemy. And if I'm not listening to the Holy Spirit, then like whose voice am I listening to? It's either mine or the enemy's. And just to be like, okay, like something needs to change here. Um, and so I was like, okay, like, how do I do this? We had some really amazing speakers come to teach on spiritual authority, and they were just like, oh my goodness, I could talk for, like, hours and hours and hours about spiritual authority and, like, what I all learned, um, and it's a big topic, and it's, like, so important, um, but for the sake of time, I, like, can't go into everything, but I just, like, you guys, like, if, if the enemy is, like, trying to attack us, like, we can fight back. Like, through the Holy Spirit, we have the authority to say, like, no, I'm not standing with you. I, like, rebuke this thought and like Jesus come in and like fill this hole because if we also say like okay enemy like you're done like I'm not taking this there will be a hole and it's so easy for that to get filled up with like the rubbish again but if we're like okay Holy Spirit like I want your truth to come in and to just like fill that and it's like cool and it's not necessarily always like a one and done it's not gonna be like okay enemy like get back to hell where you belong and then it's over like sometimes he will fight back over and over and over and over again but like, we have the authority, like through God and through the Holy Spirit, we can say like, no, and we can fight back and we don't have to listen. Um, yeah, I don't know. I could just like go into that so much, but like, yeah, I don't know. Second Corinthians 10 verse five. I should probably look at this because I don't have it fully memorized, but it says something about taking every thought captive. Um, yeah. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And I think that, like, the making it obedient to Christ thing is so important. And, like, yeah, just to take those thoughts that we get from the enemy and to, like, shove them to the side and say no, and to be like, okay, God, like, I know you have something to say instead of this. And also just, like, how we talk how we pray and what we declare has so much power. In Proverbs 18, 21, it says, like, the power of life and death is in the tongue. And I think, like, I know that for me, I often forget that and can just, like, say all these things and think all these things. But, like, when we pray, when we're praying out loud, like, those prayers make such an impact. And I just want to encourage you guys this week to just step out in that and to, when these negative thoughts come, like, you're not enough or you're not worthy or anything else that's going on, to just be like, no, that is not from God. He would not say that, and I like rebuke that, and I will not believe that, and just to like pray out loud 
and just like invite the Holy Spirit and God to come and fill that hole because yeah, it's just like so valuable. Um, yeah, that is my word for you guys. And Rogan, you can come up. Thank you. So good. So good. Okay, so I had the laptop out and they closed on me. All right, so just give Lenny another round of applause while we set this up, eh? <laughs> all right, all right, so close. All right, guys, so, um, hello. Uh, so for those of you, there might, okay, so there might be some of you um, in this room that are like nudging your neighbor and be like, who's this guy on stage? Like, i never seen him before. And some of you might be like, oh yeah, he's the guy that played the piano like two years ago or something like that. Um, so I, was, I realized that in the time that I've been gone, there's like so many new faces. Um, so my name's Rogan, as a couple of people have said. Um, and I've been at the School of Ministry, uh, Catch the Fire School of Ministry in Toronto for the last like year and a half or so, which has been so good uh, for me. It's really changed my perspective on Jesus. It's really changed my perspective on what it is to live in communion with him. Um, and that's not just like the bread and the grape juice, um, but that's like living in the spirit with Jesus. Um, and that's part of what I want to speak about today. Um, but I'm just going to give a bit of like a context uh, what's Catch the Fire, um, what's, the school, what's the School of Ministry, what was I doing, um, right, so I've actually learned so much. I was there for three semesters. Uh, it was, so once as a student, um, and then twice, and then the next two semesters, they asked me to come back as a leader, as a small group leader for the school, which basically means that I'm then one of the leaders. The school, the school curriculum is the same, but I'm then one of the leaders walking with the students, um, getting to pour into their lives, getting to pour into their walks with Jesus, um, get to right, answer questions. Like, it just like to have my, having my own small group and getting just to have like four, three or four guys um, just to pour into, um, which was actually so good for me. Like, there's, there's something that you learn a lot when you have to actually pour out into people. You have to be like, oh, wait. Do I, do I know this? Like, wait, what, is, what does this mean, actually? I know this, but how do I say it to others, right? Um, so there's something about that where actually it really, ele I think it elevates your knowledge of what, what it means to live as Christ and what it means to pour out. Um, so being a leader also, um, it was, being a small group leader also meant I was then an outreach leader. Um, so at the end of the school, it was about a four or five month program, then I got to then we get to go on outreach, um, which is going to another country, and we get to basically preach what we've been talking about, or what we've been taking in, the, what the speakers have been saying, right, to us. We get to preach that. We get to preach the name of Jesus to other people. Um, so as a student, I went to South Korea, and then as a leader, then I helped lead an outreach team to England, as well as to Belize, um, which all three of those, I'd say, have honestly changed so much in my mind, like slowly just shaping me for who I am. Right, and just like helping me in my walk with Christ. Um, so I would say one of the most like rewarding things about being able to walk with people and to like getting to pour into people is to see people like in this term in the uh, in school of ministry, to see people come into the school of ministry as one way, like shy, reserved or something, and they leave completely changed like completely like out there going for Jesus, like they're passionate about Jesus and that, and just to be able to walk with them to see the progress of it, like that it, to me is like so rewarding. Um, and that is honestly like, that's the power of Jesus. Like that is the power of Jesus at the work in a person. Um, and that power of, the, of uh, the power of Jesus is a hand for each and every one of you. Um, so I want to speak about that. I want to speak about what Jesus did on the cross, and I also want to speak about um, something that's a, that started that God has started to put on my heart is the topic of like evangelism, uh, what it means to like share that the gospel, right? Um, so we read in Mark sixteen fifteen, uh, Jesus says he said to them, uh, "Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation." 
And in my life, I would have been like, evangelism, like, nah, like, that, that's not me. Uh, evangelism is for those crazy on fire, like, missionaries that go out to probably Africa to some remote, like, location. And I don't know, like, they, I guess they preach the name of Jesus, but like, man, that, that's not for me. If that's what evangelism is, like, that's not for me. Um, but I, wanted, I just want to say, like, that, that, like, that is, right, that is evangelism, but evangelism is, all, is also for each and every one of you um, to preach the gospel to each, to people around you. Um, and I just want to share a story of when that started to change for me. Uh, it was actually uh, coming back from the school of ministry. Um, get me to, you know, if you ever are interested in, like, the easiest place, okay, easiest place to evangelize, this is, like, a little sidetrack, um, but for me, I find, I love talking to people in, in airports and airplanes, all right, I'm going to share two stories on that probably today, um, and come talk to me, and uh, you'll tell me what, and you can ask me why that is, um, but we were, um, this is actually when I was coming back from the school of ministry uh, as a student, and it was actually with Armando, uh, who is an amazing beautifully handsome man who does their announcements often, right? So uh, I was we were coming back from the school of ministry, and we were on, the, on that ramp going into the plane, if you've ever been on, been on the airplanes, um, and there was like a lineup getting into the plane. It was kind of getting really slow, and so we're kind of just like standing there, and I was like, why don't I just talk to the guy in front of me? Like, what, like what's the matter? Like, like there's, no, there's no, we're just sitting here waiting, right? So I started just talking to the guy in front of me, and we're just like, oh, yeah, why are you here in Toronto? Oh, you're, you're going home to Winnipeg? Oh, yeah, me too, right? And then he asked me, he's like, oh, yeah, so what are you doing in Toronto? Um, and what was, I do, what was I doing in Toronto? I was at a ministry school. Um, so, of course, I'm going to talk about ministry school. I'm going to talk about Jesus to him. Because like, in my mind, I was like, I'm at a ministry school. Like, why, why should I hold back Jesus, right? That's, that's literally what I was doing. Right, so I just I started talking to that to to him about that, um, and he was like he seemed kind of chill about it. He it was clear that he didn't really care for it. I think like he was just like oh cool like that's cool that you believe that or whatever, um, and it was fine. And then our line moved along and we kept going into the airplane, uh, and then when we got to our row to sit down, um, we like sat down, and then the uh, the person that was sitting beside us right there's like three seats on on the in the plane. Um, the person that was sitting beside us was a lady, and she started asking us questions, asking like me, asking Orm, um, questions about the school of, like what we're talking about, the school of ministry, right? And it was like, oh, wait, like, the, it, it just came to me, like, oh, wow, like, this person, like, I wasn't even talking to this lady. I didn't even see her on the ramp um, going into the plane. Um, and then we just, I just got, we just got to talk about uh, the school. She was a Christian, super nice lady. Uh, and then we... Um, and then we got to just like encourage her in her in her faith. She was like some of her. She was going having some like family kind of issues. Her um, her uh, daughter and her son. I think I think it was a daughter and a son. Um, they weren't really following Jesus, and she was obviously like wanting the best for them. And we got to pray with her for that. Uh, we got to just like sow into her. We got to just encourage her in her faith. Uh, and that was actually something that like really really changed me, uh, or like really changed my perspective of like. I can have those stories, too, of people going out and um, helping others and healing, um, like having stories of encouraging other people because, like, I, I just witnessed it right here. Uh, and I wasn't, like, that was totally something that God set up. Like, there's no way that, that it, like, that it wasn't. Like, I just started talking to this person, on the, this guy on the ramp, and it turns out the person that God actually wanted me to minister was the person, the lady on the plane. But the, the lady on the plane may never have asked those questions unless I had talked to the person on the ramp. Right, so I just want to say, like, the person that you're ministering to may not even be the person that you first initially talked to, and it's possible you're even ministering to the to a person that you never even talked to, but that was only listening in, right? Man, that's so powerful. Okay, so I want to speak about what. Um, so, what does it mean? Like, what is the gospel? What is what is what is that? Um, 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Um, but do this with gentleness and respect. So previously we, talk, we said, like Jesus said, to go and preach the gospel to everyone. Um, and now we say, like, what, like to have the hope inside of you. Um, so what, what does that mean? Like, what, what is the hope? What, like, what, what is the hope? Does any, like... Think of like a week ago. Yeah? Jesus? Jesus? Yeah? Jesus is going, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
right? So Jesus, right, is that hope. So what is the reason for hope is what the Bible says. And we all know that Christ died on the cross, but I really want to, like, pull up, pick that apart a little bit. And what is um, what happened on the cross? That what is that hope that we can go and we can speak to other people about? Um, so Romans, uh, are we up to Romans already? Yeah. Romans 8, 14 um, to 17 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you can live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought you about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. That if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order, uh, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Uh, what does that mean, okay? So in order to share in his glory, all right, we need to share in his sufferings. The glory that it talks about is, right, the freedom of Christ. It means relationship with, with God. Um, and what does it mean to suffer um, in Christ? It means to choose to live our lives God's way. It means to, to, to choose, to like, the way that Jesus did. Jesus followed God's will. Je Jesus followed God's way to, to the last breath, right? It, there wasn't any moment where he said, I'm, I'm done with, with Jesus' will for my life. I want to live my own way. Um, Jesus lived his, li lived his life fully to the last breath. Um, he died. And that's what I think what it means when we say we're suffering with Christ. It's like we die to ourselves and we choose to live in the Spirit. Um, and what does it mean to live in the Spirit? Um, Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Faith in what? Faith in the cross, all right? Faith in Jesus' resurrection, Jesus' death and resurrection. Galatians 5.24 says, Those who belong in Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. All right? So you and I to live means that we're looking at the cross, right? Everything in the Bible points to Jesus and on the cross. And um, this is why like, I really like, I'm, like, so like, passionate about it. This is something that's really set me free recently of what it means to have like true identity in Christ. Because um, when you and I, we said Jesus come into our lives, we, we said I want to be like, uh, we became Christians. So it means that we're not throwing Christianity down their throats. We're, we're, what we are doing is we're claiming the gospel of Christ. We're saying this is the freedom that you can have. If you choose it, that's up to you, right? If it's, it's your choice to accept Christ. You can choose it. You can accept that this is the freedom that I've received. You can even share testimony of your own freedom that you've received, right? Um, this is the freedom, and you can have this too. Do you want it? And people will, people will turn you away. Uh, I've had people that are just like, yeah, whatever. Uh, I've had a debate with a guy in a plane, a non-Christian. It's not actually a good idea to get in a debate because by that point, they've already decided that they don't want Christianity anymore, um, that they, um, and actually, actually, it was a really growing experience for me, another story. Um, but the truth is you don't know who you're planting a seed into. You don't know, right, as I was talking earlier, you, you, you don't know. So who are we to, like, say that this person over here, like, we have the freedom, we have inheritance to go to heaven. Who are we to say that the person over there on the street or the person in your workplace doesn't deserve to go to heaven because of their actions. Man, none of us deserve to go to heaven. I don't know about you, right? But God gave us that free gift, and that's the good news. Um, so I just want to share one story. I'm way past time, but I, this is like, it gives me passion, right? Um, I just want to share one story. Uh, it was another on a plane, all right? Um, and I was, I, you know, I sat down. I was flying from, from Toronto to Winnipeg, so it was about a three-hour flight. And then uh, I sat down beside the guy. He was about my age. Um, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to speak Jesus to this guy. Like, I don't know him at all, but, like, I'm just going to try it, right? We have three hours. We're kind of just sitting beside each other, right? So I'm just going to 
try it. So I just started, um, actually, I think he actually asked me a question first. I think I was a little too scared. I was like, oh, man, do I want to talk to him or not? Like, uh, but I think he asked, talked to me about something. And I was like, OK, I got to open this up. You know, he's off his phone watching his movie now. I'm going to talk to him now, right? <laughs> so I then I just, I just started talking about, like, hey, man, like, like, so what, what are you doing in Toronto? Like, we just started talking about, like, what, what I, I just started asking him questions, like, where it's home for you? Oh, yeah, home's in Winnipeg. Oh, yeah, you're doing university here in Toronto for, like, the past year or so. Um, yeah, that's so cool. Um, and then eventually, after I was asking him questions, being interested in him, right, take note, be interested in somebody, right, and then they start being interested in you, all right? So then once they start being interested in you, then you can share what's, what's on your heart, which is Jesus, right? So, um, I, so I just started asking him questions, and eventually he's like, oh, so yeah, so, like, so what are you doing in, like, Toronto? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm at, like, you know, school of ministry, I'm at, it's at a ministry school, and I just got to talk about Jesus, about him. And eventually I asked him, like, the question, and he was actually super open about it. Some people, you have to kind of sense if people, how people are actually sensing, feeling about you actually speaking this. Um, he was pretty open about it. Uh, and he, so I asked him, like, so what, what's your view of, of God? Like, I, for me, I'd actually never asked this question before. I was like, yeah, I'm going to try it. Like, what's your view of God? And I think, he's, I think he said something of, like, oh, you know, kind of an over, kind of someone up there. Um, up above, whatever, like kind of a vague description of him. And I asked him, I was like, can I tell you what my view of God is? And he was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, and I was like, whoa, like, okay, here we go, right? So I just got to speak, I just got to say just who God is to me, how like God the Father is to me. Um, and that was, uh, for me, that was just such a growing moment for me. But it, it was like, it was such a like powerful moment that I just got to speak my uh, who God is to a non-Christian, that I got to speak that and at the end of the conversation, I didn't really feel like God was, I didn't feel he was really ready to accept Christ. So I didn't feel like, oh, yeah, you must now accept Christ. And right, I didn't feel that that was where God was leading me to do it. Um, but what he did say was that recently one of his uh, good friends had actually turned to Christ. Uh, and I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem like any coincidence that his good friend turns to Christ and then a stranger on the plane starts to talk about Jesus to him. Right, so you don't know the seeds you're going to be planting. I didn't know that, right, I didn't knew nothing about him an hour before when I started talking. But I just started being curious about it. I didn't shove it down his throat at all. And I just got him curious about me and what I had, right, of just sharing the love of Jesus, being Jesus to people, right. And that's, like, that's just the message that I want to just share is, like, you, it can be a one-minute conversation uh, the person at work. It can be the, the guy on the street. It can be the cashier. Man, we've, uh, some of, when we went out with an outreach team, so many stories. Um, we, like, sometimes we, there's one day we're just going around giving encouragement notes to people. Uh, we walked into, like, a subway, and we just, like, hey, we just, like, went up to her, and it was like, hey, man, uh, we're just, like, oh, it was actually a lady. Um, we're just giving, <laughs> sorry, I used two different words there. Um, we, I, we were, I was just like, hey, man, we're just going around encouraging people. Uh, would you like this? No, we're just, it's just having some fun. She was, like, super hesitant about it. Like, people in Toronto don't really do that kind of thing. Like, I don't know. People, they just kind of stick to themselves and on their phones. They're in their own world, right? So then she was very hesitant about it, and she, like, took the note, and she read it. And, and then you can see her face just instantly lit up, right, when she read it. It's like, and then she's like, oh, my goodness, that's so sweet. Like, man, you know what? This just made my day. And I was like, and I just thought to myself, I was like, we talked to her, we had in, an interaction of one minute. One minute, and we made, a, a, we made a, her day, right? Like, how many people's days can we make if it's only one minute? Like, how many minutes do we have in a day to make people's? But, like, that is, like, so powerful. And that's just the love of Jesus that we have. That's the joy of Jesus. That's what we carry as Christians. Um, and we have so much that we can give, so much more. Um, so I really hope this encouraged you today, because um, this is just the gospel of Jesus. Um, can I just pray for you guys quickly? We're like 10 minutes over time, but yeah? Okay. Father God, I thank you for today. God, I thank you for each and every one of these people. God, I thank you for your message, for what you did on the cross for us. And God, would you give us boldness to walk in you, to give us boldness to proclaim your name to people and just to speak the name of Jesus and to not be shy of what we carry, but actually to know that we have um, the freedom, the key that unlocks other people and gives freedom to them as well. So, Father, we just receive from you today. Yeah, in Jesus' name, amen.